Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at how to customize our slicers to use symbols. So in this example, I have this change slicer and if I click on the up arrow, it will filter my table to only show me the products that have increased in sales this year compared to last year. The other arrow will obviously do the opposite and show the products that have decreased in sales. Okay, so here is my product list and my last year and this year sales. Now this data is formatted as a table and this table is named product sales. And we are going to use a slicer on it. Slicers are more commonly known to work with pivot tables and pivot charts, but it can also be applied to standard tables for your worksheets like this one. Now the first thing we need to do is create that column that shows whether there has been an increase or a decrease in sales. And we're going to use an if function for that. But we want this simple if function to show the up or down arrow symbol. So I'm going to click in a random cell so I can insert those symbols and then just copy and paste them into the formula. Click insert and then symbol. And for me, the arrows that I want are in my recently used symbols list. But although this example uses these arrows, there are many symbols here that you might find as a creative way of using your slices for your reports. But for this example, I'm going to select the up arrow and insert it, and then select the down arrow and insert it. Now these symbols are coming from the Wingdings font library. And that means we're going to have to make a few changes in a few moments to our column and then ultimately our slicer. If we close this window for now, there is the two arrows. I'm simply going to take a copy of those and then escape this cell so that I can go and create that change column. So if I label it change, and then I'm going to write that if function that will simply test if the value this year, we have our table references there, is greater than that of last year, comma, then it's an increase. Now I'm going to paste in those symbols. And at the moment, this column is not using the Wingdings font. So they don't look like arrows yet. But that first one should be the up arrow and the second one, the down arrow. If I wrap some double quotes around these and separate them for comma, so the first one is the value of true, second one is the value of false, close bracket and enter. And that will shoot to the bottom because this is in a table. Now I'm going to format that column. So if I select this column of the table using the table column selector arrow, and then from my home tab, I'll simply change it to the Wingdings font. Here we go. And now it looks appropriate. Up arrows for increases, down arrows for decreases. Now it's time for the slicer. Click inside the table, insert slicer, and I want one for the change column. Click and OK brings it in, but at the moment it doesn't look correct because of the formatting of the slicer and we are using a Wingdings font. Now there are symbols in the Calibri or the Arial gallery as well for these normal font types, but we have got Wingdings and there's a lot of good stuff in the Wingding libraries. I'll just resize this slicer and then at the top on the slicer tab, we have the styles gallery. I'm going to begin by changing the color to one that I want. Let's just pick this yellow one for now. And then to customize that, to bring in the Wingdings font, I will right mouse click on that style and duplicate it. I'm not going to worry about the name of this style right now. I'm just going to ensure that whole slicer 
is selected as the slicer element and click on format so that I can choose a Wingdings font and click OK. And I'll click OK again so that that is applied to the style. Now at the moment, the slicer is still using the previous style. So up in the gallery above, I need to make sure I select the style that I created. And here it is. Looks perfect, doesn't it? No, no. We need to do something with that header. So we've got the arrows working correctly. And indeed, if I clicked on this, it would filter my table wonderfully how I want it to. Let me clear that. But that header doesn't look correct. Now, one thing we could do is we could hide the header. I could come up to the slicer tab, go to slicer settings, and just simply uncheck the display header. So when I click OK, I don't have a header at all, which first of all solves the winding font problem, but second of all actually gives me a little bit more space as well. And this is quite a primitive example I'm demonstrating right now, but if we had a report with lots of different metrics and uh, statistics going on, then saving a bit of space is a skill in itself. However, what it does mean is that if I choose one of these arrows, I no longer have that little button to clear the filter. I could clear it by coming to my data tab and using my normal clear button for my filters. A slicer is just a filter, but maybe that's not really how we want to be clearing it. So I'm coming back to the slicer tab, back to slicer settings, and I'm going to bring that header back. We could change its caption if you don't like change. Click OK, and we need to deal with the font. So back to the style that we duplicated and have applied, right mouse click, modify. I don't want to duplicate this one again. And I'm going to the header slicer element and format, and we can choose something that's not windings basically. So I could choose Calibri, but I could also scroll and choose a different font such as Aroni and click OK. And now we have a normal looking header, one that people can read. <laughs> Although we're here talking about using symbols in our slicers for something more creative, like happy and unhappy faces or thumbs up, thumbs down, currency symbols, lots of good creative reasons. But we're also seeing here, if you weren't aware before this video, how much we can customize these slicers even if we're not using these symbols. So to finish off, if I drag this into place, I could hide this column unless you find that useful. And now I have this slicer that if I click them, will filter or slice my table's data. And this could easily be affecting a chart that might be using that table data or even our pivot tables and pivot charts. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on the YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.